Guardian and Mark Wallace uh, of Conservative Home. Welcome to you both. And Mark, uh, it seems to me there's a certain amount ang of anxiety here for the Brexiteers, but they may not be having it all their own way. I think there is a bit of anxiety. And so, you know, speaking as a Leaver myself, you know, it, you, you can't divorce the way people respond to this news from the history of Euroscepticism. 40 years of literally losing everything at every single turn we were defeated, except on the Euro. So there is a very deeply ingrained sense of suspicion that you're going to be conned if you win, you're going to be ripped off even if you get through, uh, and, uh, and, and somehow this might be taken away, and, and you know, current events um, certainly play to that. I mean, as though you're not yeah. the one to accept the 52% saying we won, show up the 48%. Well, it's, I mean, you know, this kind of direct democracy, the new language of direct democracy, which is we won by a landslide, 4%, you shut up forever, 48% of the country, is not, I have to say, the way I wanted things to go. It doesn't seem to be very um, consensus driven, shall we say. Um, the thing is, I mean, if we are talking about the, the Alistair Heath line that the leavers feel like they're going to be conned, they are. They have emerged very querulous. They came out of the referendum very whiny, actually, considering they won. They haven't stopped whining since they won. And they blame everything on the Remain side, while at the same time telling the Remain side that they're irrelevant. Um, so I, I haven't got much sympathy with that. But I do have sympathy with the fact that, you know, Alistair's saying, they haven't got buyer's remorse, they want something to happen. Well, they haven't got buyer's remorse precisely because nothing has happened. So you wouldn't, of course you wouldn't regret anything if you can't see any impact of it on your economy. Now, obviously the government is dragging their feet because they didn't have a plan and they still don't have a plan. But I don't blame the people who voted leave for thinking, for having a sort of uncertainty, a kind of disquiet, not just that they might be conned out of their result, but also that they might actually not have remorse because they haven't seen the results. I mean, tell us what you think you voted for. Was it all the way out, basically, all the way down to World Trade uh, Organization rules, it, it, no it, single market? It doesn't have to no be World Trade, Trade Organization rules, but it certainly shouldn't be single market or customs union membership. When vote leave... That doesn't leave much, does it? Well, yeah. well it, it leaves a free trade agreement, for yeah. example. It leaves the kind of relationship most yeah. countries in the world have without having to just and, rely and on... And going on paying into the EU, as David Davis said this morning? I mean, to a certain extent, that will on, depend on the details of the negotiation. You know, there's going to be a lot of back yeah. and forth. And also, you know, on Sunday, the Italians are going to, by the looks of it, probably vote no in their referendum and throw a huge spell into the works of the Eurozone. So we don't know exactly what the EU is going to want out of these negotiations but yet either. But we know, we know enough to know that they treat us with suspicion and hostility now. And I don't think the Italian referendum is going to make a huge amount of difference to that. They might be in chaos, but they're not going to go, oh, those guys in the UK are really... Um, well, I think sensible, I, sympathetic here's, voice. Here's a way that it does make a difference. You know, when, when, when you say, oh, well, once something changes, mm. then leavers might start to regret it if there's an impact on the economy. Well, what happens if there's a Eurozone crisis? What happens yeah. if well, the Brussels... Do you, think, do you think we're going to be unaffected by a yeah. Eurozone crisis? No, of course not. I'm not <laughs> saying I want a Eurozone crisis no, either. Exactly. What I am saying is when Brussels is asking its members for more money, when they're talking about banking union control over taxes and deficits as extended as they already are... No, we're going to be... How are voters going to think We're going to be poleaxed by a e by Eurozone crisis just as we would have been if we'd been in the euro for is, in perpetuity. Uh, is, the is whole point is that to desire more when EU? It's, it's actually, it but, is. It, but you know, you're, this isn't logical. The point is, is in, a, in, a global, in, in a global economy, when one block has a crisis, as we saw with the American subprime crisis, yes. it affects all of us. And some, Indeed, the, which I, know, I didn't say it wouldn't affect I know, us. But I said you it know, would. This, this idea, and then if you try and play that as a kind of a reason not to be in the euro is preposterous. The idea that you it's like might saying have we shouldn't be in the world. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry because <laughs> being in the world doesn't mean you have to bail out Italian banks, for example. Well, it doesn't mean you have to well bail out. But the it Euro does. Zone, it does seem to me, and this really is, is I, I mean, Simon Jenkins' article I have to say I found rather dense, but not stupid, but complex. Not so Simon Jenkins' article. Mm. I, it, it does feed into this that, if you like, the spirit of British compromise seems to have been abandoned. I do think there are some problems here, and I think you know, one, one, one reason I think it's worth considering that Leave voters were quite aggrieved after the referendum is their experience during and after the referendum was in large, court, in large part being called rapists, to being called ignorant old racists who shouldn't be listened no, to. And I'm afraid that... Everybody called everybody a lot of nasty names during the referendum, indeed. and the difference is Remainers aren't still bleating on about Remainers it. Remainers certainly aren't still bleating on about it. When you, when you, say, no, that not. When you <laughs> say there was this very slim majority, <laughs> I think it's worth looking at the way The Guardian, for example, reports the fact that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote 
in America Leave won the popular vote by, much, by a much higher percentage, than by double the percentage that Hillary Clinton won in America, and yet we still hear people that's say, oh, well, no, look, Clinton that's, won, that's she has these rights. That's, that's a misunderstanding of electoral systems. The reason we talk about the popular vote versus the, uh, the college vote in America is because they, the numbers are different. The reason we don't talk about that with the referendum is that we weren't doing it by constituency. You just we were, did it was talk about the numbers. We you just cited the numbers. You said yeah, it's, no, no, it's no, sounding narrow. Well, so no, 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 come on. Well, I need to make my point on this. The, the referendum was very simple. A number of people voted one way, a number of people voted another way. There, wa there was no popular vote versus college vote. There was no popular vote versus first past the post. That is pure obfuscation you, on your part. But, but to dismiss yes. a, a, a vote of the largest vote, the largest vote ever in Britain, the largest vote ever for anything in British democratic quite history was to leave. All right, what about <laughs> quite a small margin. in your newspapers, Ellie, Sir Simon Jenkins suggesting that actually bit the fault of the Liberals that uh, over defensive advocacy of minorities uh, led uh, to the sort of polarization the, we've seen. The, the thing is, there's something in it, isn't there? When he talks about Richard Rorty and everybody on the internet has been going wild about this Richard Rorty quote where this philosopher 20 years ago said, there will come a time when the kind of Rust Belt Americans will rebel Badly against- Badly educated Americans yeah. uh, will get angry about having their manners dictated to them by college graduates. Yeah. And it, it did seem to be remarkably prescient, that remark. And there is something in the kind of liberal elite. You get everything you say on Twitter now. Somebody says you're a m metropolitan elite. You know, even if you're talking about mm -hmm. schools and immigrants in schools and your own kids are at an inner city London school with a load of immigrants, you're still an out of touch liberal elite. And I think we take it too easily. The truth of it is all that kind of identity politics narrative, the kind of let's try not to be racist, let's not be, cr let's not be misogynist, let's not be anti-gays, you know, it actually wasn't that assertive. It was just asserting universal human rights. It wasn't just because, just because you feel alienated by a feminist narrative doesn't mean you've had anything taken away from you. It just means somebody's asking for equality and you don't like it very much. I just reject the idea that because people are kind of rebelling against it, then we should all look, in, look into our own souls. I'm sorry, th this is part of the problem. Identity politics is not the same as let's not be racist. You can be not racist, not anti-gay, without indulging in identity politics. Well, so it's what do interesting. you call identity politics then? Identi well, I, I think you can see a good example of identity politics in what David Aronovich writes about in The Times, where you find that p some people, because of their perceived self-identity on the left as progressives, were willing to apologise for Fidel Castro, someone who no, put no, gay Mark, people into camps, Mark, who, no, who was a homophobic dictator, because no, their you're identity missing the point politics completely. Led them you're to missing the point completely. What Thank Simon's you. talking about is um, the people who actually make it a badge of honour to be okay. a, a minority. We'll That's nothing to do with the left. Or a champion thereof. I'm sorry. Identity politics has become well, a left wing right, I mean, Fidel Castro <laughs> in Britain is probably a bit of a non-event. But anyway, thank you very, very much <laughs> indeed. This